All right, good morning and welcome to Coffee with Marcus. All right, this will be an exciting morning and in a moment you will see why. So let's see, on a wonderful Monday morning, July 31st, who here wants to make money with trading? <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Who here wants to make enough money with trading so that, that you can quit your job? What about that? Pretty cool, huh? And uh, who wants to make so much money with trading that you can travel the world and live the lifestyle you always dreamed about? <laughs> yeah, exactly, huh? So, how many of you want to get as much as possible out of our time together today? <laughs> exactly, yes, exactly. I want that for you. Good morning, everybody. So, uh, here is what we are going to do today. Today, we're going to talk about how to trade while traveling. And in a moment, I'll show you exactly how I trade when I'm traveling, when I'm on the road. You'll see my travel setup, and I'll show you exactly what I'm doing when I'm traveling and when I'm not at home in front of my computer. Sounds good? All right, good. So, who here attended the Coffee with Marcus that I did two weeks ago? Who was here two weeks ago? Okay, cool. Uh, quite a few of you. All right, so what happened in between, I told you that I was traveling to, to Singapore. And I did. Um, and I'm on the road again. Um, do, you, do you guys want to see some pictures from Singapore? Do you just for a few minutes before we go back to the markets? Sound good? All right, fantastic. Let me do this. Uh, let me just uh, quickly switch this here to... Uh, yeah, to the pictures. All right, you should see the pictures right now. These, this is in Singapore. These are the gardens at the bay. They were pretty amazing. So this was pretty cool. Oh my gosh, this was a hot day. It was in the in the mid nineties, but it's very very humid there. So uh, this was cool. Uh, let's see what other pictures do I have here for you? I believe. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> All right, that's their financial district. So that is the skyline of Singapore. That was pretty cool to see. Uh, this here is an amazing building. You see, it's a hotel. Uh, so this here is a hotel. And then on top, they have this really cool thing. Looks like a, a ship or a subway sandwich. I mean, hard to say, right? So there's an infinity pool up there. Uh, it's, it's really cool architecture. Very, very impressive. <clears throat> uh, this was the local street food. Uh, when I was done with all my workshops that I gave there, I was uh, adventurous, and uh, this is when I decided to try some of their local street food. It was really, really, really good. I loved it. Um, here's something funny. So when I came back into the U.S., um, I'm traveling a lot, so I have this global entry where you have to go to the kiosks. I'm pretty tall. I'm 6'6 six, six tall, and here's the picture that this kiosk took from me. See? There you go. Uh, so that is probably right now in their database. <laughs> Anyhow, you get the idea. So you have to uh, show this receipt. There's my passport uh, to go through immigrations. And uh, so somehow these uh, things are only adjusted for, I don't know, like people up to 5'5 five five or something like this. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Anyhow, cool. Uh, so and now I'm on the road again. So here's what I'm doing right now. Um, you, you probably know this. My, my son, he's 14 years old and he's a sailor. And he has uh, two regattas coming up in the Northeast. So this is where um, we decided to go from Austin, Texas, all the way up to uh, Cape Cod uh, in, in Boston, Massachusetts. So as you can see, it's 2,002 miles. And uh, we started the journey on Thursday. Uh, it took us pretty much uh, all of Thursday to get out of Texas. Texas is a pretty big, big state. Uh, then on, uh, well, I think we, we made it right into Arkansas. Um, yeah, we, we went through Arkansas. Can't remember a lot of Arkansas. Um, it was nice. Uh, then on Friday, we went through Tennessee. So that's pretty much what we did on Friday, this part. Uh, then yesterday, no, on Saturday, on Saturday, we made it through Virginia, went up to Shenandoah National Park and stayed there for a little bit. And uh, this morning, uh, we are here at Washington, D.C. Um, here, by the way, this is the, the Shenandoah National Park. Very, very, very impressive, very cool. And uh, see, these are the, the pictures here at night. It's, uh, it's just amazing. All right, anyhow, uh, so as you can see, I travel. And how do I trade when traveling? Let's go back to the, 
to the markets here. And uh, there we go. So right now, uh, I am using a software called TeamViewer where I'm logging in remotely into my trading computer at home. So uh, I am right now uh, pretty much at a, at a rest stop here uh, on our way. And I logged into my computer at home so that I can see what the markets are doing. So uh, this is my setup that I use for day trading. However, when I'm traveling, I am not day trading because uh, I'm connected right now through my hotspot. And uh, I'll, I'll write this, uh, this stuff down here in a minute uh, uh, so that you see exactly how I'm doing it. But while I'm connected through the hotspot the, and connected to my remote computer, this is when I don't want to day trade. So while I'm traveling, I'm swing trading. Uh, this is when I'm trading stocks, options, and binary options. And uh, you see, this is what I want to do. Uh, I was just preparing it for you before we got in there. I just wanted to label the markets that I'm usually watching here. So this is uh, gold. So the markets that you see here, and uh, let me just label this. This is the 30 year bonds okay cool so the markets that i usually watch are here the mini s p and as you can see this morning uh we, we are up uh, three and a half points from friday's close so up uh, almost nothing pretty much unchanged 0.13 percent uh the nasdaq up a little bit higher here so it's up already 12 and a half points this morning it's three minutes before the markets open so in the overnight session see that there was a movement that this morning the markets seem to open on a positive note. Uh, Imini Dow here on the upper right, uh, up a quarter of a point right now. So as you can see, Nasdaq and Dow are moving nicely here right now. The S&P 500 is lagging a little bit. So the Dow up 55 points from Friday. Uh, on the lower left, we see crude oil, and crude oil is already down almost half a percent this morning. So down 20 cents. As you can see in the overnight session, uh, it was scratching $50 a barrel, and this is where it found some resistance, bounced all the way back, and is right now trading at $49.50. Gold here slightly down uh, from Friday's close, so right now we are down 0.14%, and these are the bonds here, the 30-year bonds right now also down with gold. Usually when the stock market is going up, uh, this is when gold and bonds are going down. So there's an inverse relationship. Uh, so as we see stock markets going up uh, 0 0.16, 0 0.27, 0 0.27 here, this is when we see gold and bonds usually uh, being down. Again, this inverse relationship. So um, let, me, let me just talk about here uh, trading when traveling. How do I do it? First, I use a software which is called TeamViewer to connect to my PC, trading PC, at home. Um, and, and here's why I like to do this. I do not like to have my charting software and everything installed on multiple computers. I personally don't like this. I like to have one main dedicated computer and I know that this computer just works like clockwork. I mean, it's a Dell computer. I've bought it a few years ago. It's very, very clean. There's not much on there because it's not my work computer. My work computer, so this just as a side note, uh, side note, and it's just, uh, I don't even know how to spell this. So let's just say note, uh, my work computer is a Mac. It's a MacBook Pro actually. So this is where I have all the software that I need for, for work. This is where I have my email account. This is where I have the browsers. This is where I have Word, where I have PowerPoint, where I have all this kind of stuff. But here on my trading computer, it's very clean. There's only the trading software and uh, my, my trading platform. OK, uh, secondly, what I do when traveling is I use uh, my, my hotspot uh, on the phone. And uh, here's why. I use the hotspot on the phone and uh, I am, I can tell you this, um, I'm with AT&T. Don't know if this AT&T, don't know if this is the best carrier, does the trick for me. 
And here is why I use the hotspot on my phone. Uh, it's more secure, okay? So wireless networks, especially the one in hotels or airports, are not secure. Uh, secondly, they are pretty slow, okay? So with my hotspot, I usually have a, a really good uh, put-through rate. I don't know how much it is, but it is enough to connect here, and uh, this is what I do. Okay, third, so when traveling, I usually don't day trade, okay? When traveling, I trade stocks, and this is more of a swing trading approach, okay? So this is where I say I swing trade stocks. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Eh, let's go back here. Okay, stocks, options, and binary options. So this is uh, what, what I usually do when I'm traveling. All right, cool. So let's see. This is uh, what I wanted to share with you. Now. Um, Again, looking at the markets here, the markets just opened uh, a minute ago, and as you can see, we're nicely up this morning. So um, since I have been traveling in, in Singapore, it wasn't that easy. I'll just write this down. So uh, this is just also as a note. When traveling internationally, <clears throat> I um, have very few positions on. So these are stocks and options positions, and here's why. It is mainly because of the time difference. See, uh, when I was in Singapore, uh, the time difference, so I just write this down, in Singapore, the time difference was plus 13 hours. So as an example, right now it is 8.30 central time, my time zone, and in Singapore it was 9.30 at night. So this was throwing me off. I mean, just odd, okay? So Singapore basically means if it is 8.30 uh, Austin time, and this AM when the market's open, right? Uh, Austin time. <laughs> is 9.30 p.m. Uh, Singapore time. <clears throat> so I'm not the best when, when trading at night. I, I mean, this it's just not my thing. Uh, I can trade in the morning. So this here, you see 9.30, it's after dinner, and you enjoyed a good dinner. I enjoyed an adult beverage. They actually had a Paulana, a German brewery, right there in Singapore. It was awesome. Anyhow, so uh, this is when... I mean, I didn't feel really like trading a lot at 9.30. So this is why I was keeping it very, very light. So um, what happened? Um, a few things happened. Uh, I had a, a couple of stock positions. Uh, so I had Atra. Uh, this is where I took profits. And this happened while I was there. And the cool thing is I did it on autopilot. Okay. So the way how I trade is uh, as soon as I enter into a trade, I immediately place my stop loss and my profit target. So this turned out very well. Uh, then I had uh, VRTU. Uh, this also took profits on autopilot. And uh, also I did have a position AVID that was a hold for most of the time. Uh, but I want to exit it today, and I want to show you exactly why that is. So uh, it, it was pretty nice. Uh, so two of the positions that I had, and again, usually I have up to five positions at any given time. Uh, here I had three positions on going into the international travel. I took profits on two of them. Uh, AVID was a hold, and I'm planning on exiting today, and uh, here is why. So let's move over to PowerX Analyzer. PowerX Analyzer is uh, the software that I use uh, for trading. And uh, if you go to the, the watch list and uh, take a look at uh, AVID, let me just bring it up here. So AVID, uh, as you can see, 
I was long. I am actually long. I can show you uh, my account here. I will do this in a minute. So I was long, and you see right now, PowerX Analyzer tells me sell to close. That is the signal here for today. Uh, why? Well, because uh, it didn't hit our stop loss, it didn't hit our profit target, but it didn't go anywhere. So we're having a black bar. A black bar means sell. Okay, so this is sell to close if we haven't hit our profit target or stop loss. So with PowerX Analyzer, these are the three exits that I like to use. Either I'm hitting my profit target, uh, which means that uh, I wanted to see that it goes all the way up to uh, 607 right here. See, very reasonable for the stock, but it didn't do it. Uh, my stop loss is at 505. So it's, it's right here. And as you can see, uh, it's approaching my stop loss. So this would be the second exit. And third one is whenever I see a black bar. So this is where here, uh, right now I have a black bar. So I want to get out of this. Um, let's see, uh, VRTU. So VRTU, you see we had a nice run up here. So I got in there and then I hit my profit target. So the profit target here was a uh, dollar ninety nine cents. So two dollars. Uh, this was really really nice. Moved very nicely. All right, cool. Um, let's see what else. Oh, and then uh, looking at some some new stocks here to trade. So uh, this is where we have the scanner in PowerX Analyzer, and the scanner is actually um, sorting through all the stocks that we have available that uh, fit my criteria. And my criteria here is that I want to see uh, a 60% return on investment on the stock. I want to see a closing price that is higher than $5, lower than $300. Uh, I want to see a profit factor of three. And uh, I want to see a reward risk ratio of one to one and a half and 12 trades. So with that, uh, I, I ran this actually uh, last night. So this morning, I just had to, to go in. And there's the three stocks that I'm, I'm considering for today. So uh, ABEO, um, no clue what these guys are doing. As you can see, a lot of small trends. Uh, so it's pretty cool. The average uh, trade length is only $6. Moved nicely up. Now we have a, a signal to go short to the downside. And I actually like this because it could be that we are falling back into the range. We're having a target of $1.47, so meaning that we just need to go down to $7 here. Sounds reasonable to me with a stop loss of $0.77. Cents. So here we're looking uh, to make $2 for every dollar that we risk, $1.47 for $0.77, cents, right? So as you can see, over the past year, this has performed really, really nicely. Uh, if we had taken all the signals here, 143% uh, RI, a total of 27 trades, very active stock here. Uh, winning percentage of 55%, profit factor of 3.78. So this is definitely one that I'm considering entering here today. Uh, another one, and again, I'll, I'll make a final decision here as soon as we're done with this workshop uh, or done with this coffee with Marcus here. Just wanted to give you an idea what we're looking at. Okay. Well, let's see. Now it says collection has been lost trying to reconnect. This is exactly why I don't day trade. And I hope that you can see this. Let me quickly say, uh, check my hotspot. No, everything is cool. But you see, this is why I don't day trade, but it's enough here for uh, my position trading. There we go. Fantastic. Um, <clears throat> all right, let's go to PowerX Analyzer. So here's another one that came up this morning, BRS. That is a buy, and as you can see, yeah. Okay, we don't need this. So it reestablished a connection. So that's not the nicest stock. Not really a big fan of this one. Let's uh, move on to I. Yes, reconnect to I O N S. That's another nice one here that looks pretty good. Okay, so it's been uh, short trends going all over the place. Uh, we're trying to make three times as much as we are risking a profit factor of uh, 3.29 winning percentage of 52%. So that's another one to consider. All right, anyhow, so that's what I'm looking at for today. Um, again, still traveling and uh, here are the few notes while I'm traveling. Uh, so I'm not day trading. The markets are, are nicely up here this morning. Uh, let's go back to, to the markets and uh, just uh, take a look at this. 
So as you can see, all the indices are nicely up this morning. Crude oil a little bit down after hitting $50 in the overnight trading. Gold slightly down, bond slightly down, as expected when the stock market is up. These, uh, these safe havens, uh, gold and bonds, are usually moving in the other direction. All right, cool. So that's it uh, for today for the Coffee with Marcus. Thanks for joining me here. I will stop the recording right now. And for those of you who are here live, I want to hang out for a few more minutes, answer some of your questions. And uh, so for those who are watching the recording right now, join us live, okay? Because then I'm hanging out and uh, answering a few more questions. All right, let me stop the recording. And uh, I will see you all soon.